Should you use cavity back irons or bladed irons? This is my Strix and this is the ZX4. You can see here there's cutaway in the middle with more weight and meat around the outside. Where if we look at this Mizuno blade, there's a barring across the middle and then nothing really on the top here or the outside. So what should you play and what are the benefits of these two different design clubs? So first common question we get asked here at the Gold Shop Online is, is the blade easier to shape than a cavity back? Well, that's built on the years gone by where we didn't really have launch monitors. Now we understand that where the face is in relationship to the path and strike affect shot shaping. So if I want to draw this ball, I need to get my face closed to my path and my path going more right, say, of my face. You can see that turning to the left. That's shaping the ball, not the design of a cavity to a blade. So can you hit more varied shots with a blade? Is it more playable and kind of you can do more creative shots? I would argue no. And in some cases, you can do less. Because the cavity back, for me, loft for loft, is going to launch a little bit higher. Having that little bit extra launch in the cavity back iron actually gives me more variations of shots. So it gives me a higher shot. With that height, I then feel I can shape it easier. The draw shape shot, for instance, is a de-lofted shot as a general rule. So if I've got a club that's launching low and then I try to draw it, well, it might go too low now. So having that extra bit of launch in a cavity, which it delivers for some golfers gives me more variability to my shots. That for me is a bit of a myth that we still hang on to. What about strong lofts? People ask about the fact that the loft on this club, my cavity back, is way stronger than the loft on the blade if we take seven iron to eight iron, seven iron to seven iron. So these kind of lofted quite similar because they're not the same loft or they're not the same number, sorry, on the bottom. So the loft is similar, but because one's an eight and one's a seven, they're actually very similar lofts. And the only difference that makes, really, bearing in mind you get higher launch generally from a cavity back, if it's fit correctly for you, is that I have an, a gap at one end of the set. So for me, I have two pitching wedges because all the lofts are stronger. So when I get to my pitching wedge, that's like a nine iron. So I don't have a pitching wedge. So I then have a true lofted pitching wedge before I go into my regular pitching wedges. And I've had two six irons in sets before. So all that happens is you end up with a gap at one end, the top end or the bottom end, subject to your structure of wedges or hybrids. And you fill it with an extra wedge or an extra hybrid. So do the stronger lofts make a difference? They make a difference to your ego. Hitting an eight iron further to the same distance as someone else's seven iron feels nice. But loft for loft, if you deliver the exact same loft with these two clubs, the distance differences are very, very small. You're going to see it more in ball flight from cavity to blade. Should you combo these sets? Yeah, I think that is a great option of getting the best of both worlds because the feel between the two clubs will feel different. Cavity backs generally feel a bit more powerful, maybe slightly louder sounds, where the blade might feel that kind of softer, more gameable feel, which is what people say. So having a pitch and wedge of nine and eight in a blade and then starting to combo up into cavity backs in the clubs that are harder to hit might be a good option for you getting the best of both worlds. It's something we see more and more and more on the world tours where they used to use a lot of blades, they're using less, and there's certainly more comboing going on. So why doesn't everybody use cavity backs is a question where this often leads to. And to be fair, I asked that question myself. I think it's something that more people could benefit from. And one thing I've definitely seen on certainly the DP World Tour over the years is way more cavity backs coming in to people's bags. The development area in cavity back irons to aimed at better players has blown up. That category of iron is more popular. So I think it's again, it's a little bit of a tradition which golf definitely trades off that isn't really there anymore. Should more people use cavity backs if they're not? Probably, yes. And there's other solutions because what we found in this crossover between blades, the cavity back, is we've got this kind of new category come into irons, which is the hollow body. This is a cavity back in a sense you don't see it, it's inside the head, the head is hollow, but you get the looks of a blade. So in the bag, they look what these traditional people want to see, more of a bladed iron. Down looking at the ball, there's elements of a more bladed iron. It sits right between bladed and kind of cavity back. Then when you hit the shot, 
I'm getting the help of a cavity back. You think about that weight around the outside, helping when I'm not hitting in the middle of the bat. That's what it's there for. You get that internally on the hollow bodies, but then the feel of that feels a bit closer to the blade. So you can get the best of both worlds as well if you are that way inclined where you want a certain look in the hollow body designs. At the end of the day, you need to use the club that suits your game feels and opinions the most. Should more people use cavity backs? Absolutely, I think they should.